Welcome, everyone, to the Paladins Console League. Third time's the charm. I got it this time. <laughs> and, uh, I mean, my name's Gormizer. I guess I should. I need to keep myself on track before I get off track. Rain Day, pretty here, going to be joining me. This is the pre-show, as we have before we go live, with now all of the games that we are going to have, PS4 and Xbox. So it's going to be eight best of threes. You guys ready? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow, that's a lot of games. This should be the enthusiasm we have Eight now. best of threes? Is that for real? That is for real. At least that's what I've been told as of today. So we're wow. going to be covering every console game. So everyone Fantastic. gets the limelight. We could do the same treatment we gave to the PGS yeah, 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 yeah. a couple weeks ago. And I'm excited because we actually get to see Xbox this time. Last week, we or last, I guess, two weeks ago now, yeah. we only got to see the PS4 guys. As you can tell, we don't make these decisions as to how many <laughs> sets we broadcast. So that's cool. That's news to me. That's fantastic. I'm excited to see, you know, we get a little bit of a better landscape because these guys are always competing against one another. We don't see it all the time. So I'm definitely looking forward to seeing some more names. Absolutely. Maybe yeah. some Ball and Berry? Yeah. Ball, ball and Berry. We can only keep our fingers crossed, <laughs> right? You know, we're just, uh, we'll be wound up. We're going to go through all these sets today. Yeah. And uh, here's the schedule going to be Europe first, Xbox, PS4, then we're going to go to North America. And I'm actually excited. I mean, Onslaught, we're going to get to see play a little bit later today, as well as seeing the return of Vex, the control they're going to have. Mm. And I'm also excited. It's called They're called the Baldi Bunch now. I'm sure that they're <laughs> still looking for it. But, you know, that's going to be like Baldi, Soldier Bot, Richie Styles, yeah. a lot of players that have been around the scene for a little while. So I'm excited to see what some of these Xbox teams are going to have to offer. And as well, I mean, what exactly they will be able to accomplish. Koga going to be available today as well. Yeah. So there's a lot of things, right, a couple champions a that won't be there, but Koga being allowed, I think could change a couple of games. Nick, you... It's going to change every game. You said it's going to be permaban, And I yeah. mean, I think this is where best of threes, you're probably going to see it banned either game one, or you're going to see someone come through with a really weird strategy to let a ton of stuff open just to get Koga. I don't know if Koga, though, is that valuable to be able to leave Khan, leave Furia, leave Makoa open just to get him, right? Yeah. Um, and that's the only way I can really see him making through. If you leave like all these options and are like, well... All right, well, I mean, if we're getting something, that's they're getting a right. Right? That's the fun thing about it, right? Because that used to happen with Makoa. It's like, how much are you going to give up for the young turtle, right? Yeah, you're going to ban Sky. You know Hopefully, what I, mean? I hope that happens. Right. That's the scenario that is, I think, much more fun <laughs> for everyone involved to watch. We yeah. talked about a couple of the builds. Console is the different style, right? Because they love their tracking champions. Yes. We saw the infinite ammo right, basically being run by Swiper the one time yeah. he did kind of play it. Master of Arms. I'm just, uh, I want to dig in. I think there's a lot of depth in that champion, and I think we're going to get to see a lot of fun stuff with him. And I think at this point, we've only had two games to really see him mm -hmm. at a competitive level. One was a console game, and one was a PGS game. Yeah. And so I'm excited to see you know him coming through. And both times, I think he was relatively low on the drafting order. So I'm curious to see if he's going to kind of snake his way into that top pick, mm -hmm. or if people are going to think, well, no one's done anything with him so far because they haven't been able to, or if in scrims, he just hadn't been working. And they're going to try to just bury him down and be like, yeah, don't don't worry about him. We'll just keep playing something else. Obviously, Swiper was the only Koga that we saw in, in console, yeah. but Edgem was the only Koga that we saw on PC, and we noticed two different styles of play slightly. Uh, one of the things that I'm not sold on is the harsh training. I'm not sold on agility as an ability in general. I'm not sold. I've started to use it more, but I feel like it's <laughs> your dashes are so valuable. I forgot it was there. <laughs> Why would you use it more often? I mean, if you're going to use a bar, right, and you're going to say, it's like, I'm going to go on vacation. Are you going to go to, like, the east side of like Brooklyn, or are you gonna go to Hawaii? Every single time you make that choice, you're like, unless you got family in Brooklyn, you're gonna go to Hawaii, <laughs> right? So I think it, the agility is one yeah. of those where it's like, it's it's okay, you're not gonna have a horrible time, but there's such a better upside to the cleanse, the CC immunity, um, the healing that can come with that. So right. people augmenting around the agility is something that struck me as weird. I think that I would hope to see something to prove in some loadouts. I think the fourth bar is extremely important for Koga's just having the extra sustain. It's his version of somersault, so to speak, so he can get out after being very aggressive. Um, and I think we'll start to see some, some interesting styles play with that i think you have to look at the difference right the the most popular build we've seen is that kind of like dash around turn and burn style on pc that's just i don't know if that's going to work on console i don't know if anyone if they play on high enough sensitivities to make this work maybe somebody does You're right but basically it involves so much spinning around which is the biggest weakness of playing on the gamepad versus yeah. playing on the mouse and keyboards however their tracking i think will be better and that's what we saw swiper start off with i think that's patient. where we're going to see most people probably go to i'm kind of curious to see if he if where he stands like in relation to Vivian in certain compositions just because there's some compositions we've seen especially in the last couple weeks that are very shield heavy and one of my favorite things I don't know if it's actually as competitively viable but when you go master of arms you get wrecker and Fernando throws the shield up and you just lay into it and do it you just even disappears. need wrecker when you have master of arms not really but it's funny 
You know, it is funny. <laughs> and it, 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 I think it works because it's all about efficiency at that point because how long are you going to spend shooting a shield versus, you as know. As long as you want. As long as you want, but that means you're not doing damage elsewhere. So I think the only champion in this game that can fire faster than a Kogo with, or longer than Kogo with Master of Arms is Vivian. Vivian is the only one who has a clip large enough to be able to compete with that. Um, I mean, Saperon's Vivian is going to deal with shields by large Much and beyond better. what Koga can do with Master of Arms. Right. Uh, and I don't think we're going to see people go And it's that. an interesting, you know, sort of balance, right? We see Leon has, you know, her inbuilt cauterized, right? So she can build the wrecker. This is a different type of that in infinite ammo. You're right. not going to miss, no, no player at this level is going to miss a shield. Yeah. So that's the thing, right? You're not doing more damage to it, but it's not costing you anything to just yeah. lay into it. Right. And it also sets you up, I think, in a scenario where if you want to be aggressive, which I feel like a lot of players, like you never really want to stop shooting, and except for the fact that it can be detrimental to you. But this gives you some positioning advantage where if you're in this instance of, oh man, I can't, just can't hit this guy, even if the shield comes up, something like that blocks it, mm. you can just use that shield to reposition your aim. Like you never really have to stop firing if you don't want to. Console is an interesting beast because there are different talents that come through. Are we ever in the lucky situation to see the Dragon Claw style of play work <laughs> better on console than on PC for some reason. Maybe A, because it can't be punished, or maybe A, because the window or the breadth of succeeding is a little bit higher on, on console, or at least a little bit lower to be able to succeed more. You, you don't have to pay that cost. Hitting a, a, a claw and, and a fiery flame claw on console might be a little bit right. simpler and a little bit more effective for the style that they're playing. I think the first thing we have to see is Get like a, a claw build come out. At right? all. On console, on PC, it doesn't really matter. When I look at console versus PC, it's a couple of things. We already talked a lot about spinning around is a little bit harder, but tracking is a little bit easier. Projectiles might be a little bit more difficult on console than they are on PC. They are projectiles, but they're pretty meaty, right? Yeah. It's kind of like a Zen Auto, right. and the console guys play Zen just that's fine. Nice. So I don't think that's going to slow them down. I've also never seen Luminary with the claw. We haven't seen something like that. We haven't seen Luminary with him in general because of the way Genos has dropped yeah. Beyond Furia and, and even sometimes Damba and Grover. But, I mean, that's huge. That's 750, uh, 760 a swipe, something like that. It's yeah. pretty yeah. nasty if you're able to actually add those two together. I want to see that... that um that uh, the, the dash burst build yes. come out with Torvald as well, right? Ooh, Where right. you can have all the damage jam, not just your in hands from Genos, but I think Torvald could be a really interesting thing. Maybe Torvald's what, you know, Torvald that does spice it up. That could be the thing that up. blends Blood Reaper into the Right. Because you can dash in, burst, and get the dash or get the safety from the bubble afterwards. Because what do we talk about the, the, the back draw, right, of the claw build? It's so high risk. Torvald right. is the guy that covers those gaps That's and right. kits. Well, it sounds like everyone here is excited for it. I'm excited because I know a lot of the maps, especially in a best of three, we see will be like Bright Marsh, Jag Falls, Frog Isle, yeah. those where Koga potentially will be able to shine. But as far as that goes, I mean, we just want to go ahead and jump right into it. So we're going to take a short break as we get set up for the games. But we're going to be back with the start of the console league. Well, we were there and now we're here. It's time to cast Mastering some console. Mastering the art of teleportation. <laughs> Welcome to well, the... Well, actually, I was uh, here the whole time. I just mastered the art of standing so incredibly it. still. Oh, watch. <laughs> I love it, man. Well, we're here in the console. Rain Day pretty here. And, of course, if you guys want to join us for real live at HRX, you can find your tickets at HiResExpo.com, November 16th to 18th. <laughs> Look at that guy in the middle. I saw that the guy's console face. Guy. Ah! Ah! You, <laughs> you guys need to be that excited about console right now. And if you're not, you're kicked out. That's how we do it. It's like a Trump rally. If you're not supporting and clapping every <laughs> single moment, we're going to switch in with another guy with a MAGA hat. And here we go. It's time for the PCL. Let's get to the schedule. Let's get to the standard. Innings. Let's get to set one as soon as possible uh, because we do have uh, Radiant, it seems like, versus uh, – I'm not quite sure what that logo I'm is. I'm not sure that logo is either. OTP. OTP. Okay. All right. So they'll be going on. Let's take a look at the logo. maps. I think in terms of, you know, logos, fiasco bros, the koala with no hands is, is definitely Oof. still up there for me. I do like me some koalas, especially – no hands, you said? Yeah. Oh, dear God. And it's it's very dark, right? Yeah. And it's like, why the koala? Uh, well, all right. We also can just be told what, what the map is. It's Stone Keep, so we're going to move on to that uh, very soon. I'm sure picks and bands will be coming up. It is Stone Keep, where game number one will be. Remember, this is a best of three. Right. We're showing all eight matches today, uh, so we will have quite a bit of time. Is there anywhere that Koga... I, I think Frog Isle, for me, is like maybe a map that Koga probably would get through, because I don't think he's going to be 
that insane there. You know right. what I mean? I, right. I'm, I'm thinking through like Serpent Beach. You know, he doesn't have that high think, ground skill, but he climbs. Right? The question is, do you play Koga just for the hell of it? Just to play Koga? Absolutely. I mean, on week and, one, and week one, absolutely. Easy. You're gonna get a lot of prime time. You're gonna. Twitter clips. I mean, yep. you're going to get the hype from us. I don't know. I think these players are already kind of making their decisions, but I would be interested to see if someone just for the sake of it, like, we got a good composition. We just need a support. Need a Maldamba. Screw it. Let's just go Coca. Hell no nah. healer. We don't need them. Let's take it to it. So let's see the picks and bands. An exciting time. Where's the music? It's a picks and bands music. This is intense. Yeah. Will we see Koga? The vi no, we won't. Oh, man. Okay, cut the music. No <laughs> need. <laughs> now we get the can you feel me here. Can you cry? Please. Do you miss me? Turn it up in my headphones? Yeah. <laughs> I can't hear it. Turn it up in my headphones. I need it louder. Um, That's going to be how the day goes, right? That's what we talked about, though. He's probably going to be permaban, but it's about what makes it in because Makoa's in. be permaban. So that's the thing. I mean, if you OTP have this incredible Makoa game, right, or Willow, your bands have to start adjusting. I mean, yes, Torvald and Khan, but on a map like, uh, it's not Stonekeep, but I guess Frog Isle, when snipers start to take a priority in bands, there may not be a chance to right. let the Koga through, because you ban the Strix, you ban the Knessa, all of a sudden they're like... And if there's a map that I think he's going to be weak on, it's probably not. Yeah, so it'll be interesting. So that might be the map, you're right, where we see Bomb King Fernando here grabbed up with a Nara. Big front line, but the Willow should be able to handle a lot of that anti-heal. Makoa by himself. Okay, who will it be? The Furia. Be humble. Sit down. <laughs> I'd be surprised if she Furia didn't Lamar, say sit down. Yeah. <laughs> Kendrick Lamar's offspring happened to bump into an angel on tour. And then, hey, things happen. One thing led to another. It was a night to remember. A little OTP. Yeah, a little. Victor's going to be picked up here towards the end of the draft. Still need that healer. Still need that support. Yeah. This is where they would go Koga. This is where <laughs> Koga. Right here. Need the if support. If I had any. <laughs> and he's, if only it wasn't where I'd put my Koga. It's Grover. And now Cassie will be taken with who else will be paired? Leon is still open. It's going to be the Varric. I mean, they need something to contend with the Inara and the Fernando. Uh, Makoa can do a plenty of things by himself. Still no Genos, notably, in yeah. um, these compositions. I don't know, man. Double front with, I don't know, Makoa and Fernando can kind of go tip for tat. Varric and Renar on the point cannot. So that was an interesting point for OTP to kind of double down and go three DPS, right? Mm -hmm. And just use Makoa to bruise around and make space for those guys to succeed. Yeah. I'll have to see if it works out for them. Big conversation with the console guys is, you know, what type of roster do you have? Do you have that flexibility, right? Right. And I think some of those right. top teams are getting close, but some of them are not. Some of them really need to be able to run that double front. Some of them really might struggle to find the, the right opportunity to run the three DPS. Well, you know, it's, a, it's always a battle of flexibility. It's a battle of uh, just taking on ownership of knowing a matchup. Some teams do it better than others. They put the work in, and some teams, they just try and wing it, going for what works for them and hoping that their strategy is just better overall in general. I played on many different styles back, you know, in sports where you know, either way can work for you, but you got to be able to bring it if you are the one who's saying teams need to play to beat us and we're just going to do our thing. Smutney, Smutney, Smutney. That has got to be one of the oldest Smutney? names. Smutney's in here? I think. And that, I don't know why, but that's like one of the first players I remember he, and back on PC. Oh, yeah. One of the first players I remember playing against. Holding um, Omega, huh? Maybe, yeah. Went to console. He's going to win the world championship here. OTP pushed all the way back and 66% already on the objective. This is really kind of disastrous, I think. Yeah. Radiant Esports, I don't see how they lose this one. No, I don't see it either. I mean, the problem here is they just lost the upper balcony so hard. And truly, this is what is Overtime. the benefit of owning this balcony. You are able to fight in out of the line of sight. And you can see the point, and you're safe. And there's only one angle, really, that people can come at you, and it's right here. But they've already got the jump, the Fernando beat him. I wonder if it's just a matter of master riding, Nick. Uh, they got to get there sooner. So I think you hip fire at that range, even with burst fire, right? He's so close there. He's making these big sweeping movements with his ADS. Yeah. But that goes back to drafting that, that front line that is just inferior at spearheading a charge like that. Barrick and Makoa are never going to be able to do what Inara and Fernando do. And that's the thing. I mean... Do you maybe send Makoa on the wild turtle chase by himself, maybe on the lower side, maybe go on the left this side? This is really nice. And already, I mean, Fernando is showing such an impact here, and this is one of the champions that's been a mainstay 
in Paladin's competitive, mainstay in console as well. Pretty easy to, to do all the good things with him. Man, Radiant. Putting in some work, making some move here very, very quickly. You get you get two minutes 30 once you capture the payload to get it home. They've still got a minute 40, so it's taking them less than a minute to get this bad boy about 80% of its total duration. Barrage did come out there. Oh, I don't think it picked up any kills. Good fireball control here, forcing the shield out. Needs a little bit of support here, but once they win this fight, yeah. I think it's all over. Yeah, I mean, it's done. I mean, they committed to that, and that's a problem, man. That was a losing fight for a long time. I mean, he had the brand, I'm sure, from Fernando. Uh, Inara was by herself, and this is the benefit of this, this composition. The Fernando's doing so much damage and out trading the Makoa, especially with the Bomb King behind him. And then the Inara, there's no way a bear can stand up to her uh, with the support from a Grover. There's just no way. It's too much healing. And that is Radiant Esports taking this point by storm. Nicely played there, for sure. And... Uh, I mean, if it when it's move when the game is moving this fast, we're basically in the same spot, if not more, in favor of Radiant now than ever, right? So yeah. they're going to be able to snowball this, I think, through barring any catastrophic failure. Yeah. I mean, you're looking at the ultimates for OTP. They have the ancient rage. They have the turnaround potential. That's what Radiant need to be careful of. All right. Yes, we're ahead. Let's not get stupid here. They're going to have a, a, some type of ultimate pressure. I don't know if you if you read Five, the barrack not having four, the dome shield three, available, but like two, and flame ancient one. rage. If they play into that super hard, radiant could find themselves. Oh yeah, on the back foot. Ancient rage and inflames enough to win a fight. That's for sure. But the master riding is just what hurting on the left side. We're going to see uh, the Fernando get there first, and they're pushed back again. Thanatix is doing such a good job of holding it. There's the inflame, but the barrack might already be dead. Is it too late? The movement speed is so helpful, and so the front line gets out of dodge. But it looks like Cassie rolls oh, huh. into a bomb. So see you later, damage dealer. That hurts. That hurts to watch. So the instant deletion. Look at oh. the long range bomb. Kings can't find now it. Furious but what he does have is a great angle to the back line here. A nice little two tap. And now he's going to come for a fairy. Maybe oh, clipping those wings a little bit later. Lands in the dead zone, but still zoning two players out. It's looking all good for Radiant oh, Esports. This should be a fast set if it keeps going like this. Stone Keep is one of those maps where it's not a frog aisle, but it can play like one if a team really knows what they're doing or has the right lineup. Uh, these games on Stone Keep can go 25 minutes, but they can also go six, and it looks like we're headed towards the six. Dominating performance from the start for Radiant Esports. Absolutely setting the Paladins console league on fire in game one of today. And I think that was perfect, right? That wasn't really over aggressive. I think if anything, OTP were the ones that were very, very telegraphed in their play. They wanted to win the fight with that Ancient Rage and the End Flame, but they just couldn't get it done. That Makoa was pretty much all by himself. Makoa can kill people on his own, but it's certainly better if somebody is there to help him do it, especially if you're picking up a card like Rampage for yeah. some move speed on a kill. That's really once he starts, that's where he starts to take over the fight, but it's getting that first kill in Ancient Rage that is very difficult, and I think Radiant did a good job not doing what we talked about, not playing into it super hard or super telegraphed. Yeah, I think also, you know, on console, I get it, but I think you need something to contend. You look at raw staying power, that's how I look at this, and you just don't have it with Barrick. You just don't. You have resets, you can buy time, but you got to buy time to make some incredible play. I mean, what Fnatic does when they play Barrick like this is they buy time for Fischeko to get a double or triple kill, or it's Bittner to go off, or Jera to hit a solar blessing. Uh -oh. And all of these things are Bugsy to do whatever Bugsy does. Those things are good things to buy time for. You can't give those players time. But at this point, I think you just wow. need raw staying power to contend against the Sonara. I mean, this king is really getting rolling now. This is the spot for Nato Bomb King. It's one of my favorite combinations. Once those stickies are landing, you're only about 10 yards from your opponent. King's looking so good there when he gets a little bit of support for his team. He should have died there. Giving up kills like that, that's when you know the game is is really over there. I think Radiant Esports just need to dot the eye on this one. Yeah, just a reset. That's it. Nothing to worry about this for OTP. Solar Blessing is there, but the Fury is so pressured out. She's not going to be able to heal for this entire time. And now it's a great chance. I don't know if I would have left the high ground, but they felt that confident. And so, uh, unfortunately, they are going wow. to get a little closer to the Ancient Range than they most likely wanted. Again, the Furia is back. But even through that, the brand, the Fireball, is enough. It's just the Ancient Rage finally finds value. Yeah, they spent the ultimates for that. 15 seconds, that's really tight. I don't know if they'll be able to get their feet back under them. Good zone here from OTP as well. It's appropriate, but look at that. The long distance no, kill No, you did it. Okay, they get to the objective. And Ara mounted all the while? She was right next to him, too. She was in his peripheral vision. He had the horse blinders on. 
And this is Bad News Bears. They've got everyone there. Smutney with a heal. But Revolt Kings finds two. I think this is going to be it. Nick, they let the Inara through. And Jeez, you man. after such a good Ancient Rage just makes a wild mistake. Yeah, that's where you, 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 know, you think the foot gets put down. Spending a lot of the ultimates here. I thought we were going to a next round. But not in this case. Yeah. Revolt Kings, he gets the first pick on Bomb King. He went to work with it. Well, that was a huge, huge game one for Radiant. Let's uh, obviously take a look at game two as soon as possible in the map screen when that is ready because this set looks like it could be over quickly. What a dominating performance. And Smutney back on the Grover looking pretty sharp. Just finding, I think, a balance there is the big thing for OTP. They need to find some type of composition that defines themselves. If they're going to run for the double front here, they need to get themselves a better double front. Maybe prioritize it a little bit I earlier because I think Barrett came in, what, 10th pick? Yeah, he was so their last pick. If that's the, the strategy that you're going to go, it's a little bit more important to get a front line online earlier. And I, I don't mind. Like, I think people at this point, you know, when you look at Barrett or Ash, I think it sometimes can be your flavor. I think both can have value. They can stall. They don't either have – either one doesn't have the staying power of – a Stagala, and that's what bothers me. Some people like Terminus, some don't. I just, there is no other Terminus except Inara. There's no other champion that can stay that way, that has the immunity to cauterize with the Power Siphon, that just can contend against her as an, almost a natural counter, being able to swing through with Bulldozer. Uh, that Warder's field so quickly. So I'd like to see the Terminus there in this lineup to just give them a little bit of contend on the point. Man. This is it, man. That's yeah, it. That was most. Bomb King on Fernando's butt. Great immortal oh. there. Great shielding and, you know, just fuels him to victory. <laughs> That's really the spot. That's the synergy, right? That was really only uh, a two-man show for a lot of it. It right? was. I think they did a really good job. They took over the high ground in the first one. They were doing a lot of the heavy lifting there. And that's that's your win condition, right? That's That was their first two picks, I believe, right? That's what they drafted early, and that's what they won the game with. Yeah, so uh, obviously game one was over in a flash. I think it was... It, it was over. It took less than our pregame show for the, yeah, uh, about for the entire thing. So that was a very, very quick win. Jaguar Falls here will be map number two. OTB, they banned the Frog Isle. Oh, no. So now do you see a big switch up? Does a team like this allow the Koga? They banned it last time. Do you see them maybe letting it through, saying, hey, maybe we'll be able to do something funky? I don't think so. I, I mean, sometimes you'll see that. That's like a, a VP type of strategy. You know what I mean? When it's, it's, it's a team that's near the bottom needing to do something drastic but also is experienced enough yeah. to think that through yeah. and find out you know this is how we want this to play out we That's want right. this to eventually get through and you talk about you know when you have those performances eventually maybe that you know if this was a little bit of a longer set right this game's bomb king's banned out then something else goes off that needs to be banned out as well then maybe kogo squeaks his way through but i don't know I'm not holding my breath for it. No, I mean, I think OTP were maybe trying to set up for it, right? I mean, you ban the Bomb King first. That's a good ban. You can go into ban the Drogos next or the Will or something like that. See if they ban the Torvald Khan, and then maybe Koga is open. But they get the Khan instead. They have the Willow show up for Radiant uh, and the Makoa. So they call that bluff, and they raise them, actually. What they do here, I think, with this Willow is... Uh, sort of, If they don't get Inara, they've got Willow to kind of help deal with it. If OTP don't pick the Inara because they don't want to play it into the Willow. Oh, there it is. Rating grab it anyway. So they have, oh. actually. It was the Inara. Well, there we go. OTP, apply that strategy to your next one. <laughs> so now Inara Mako, that's a strong front line. We've seen that the front line having at least that staying power, and then, wow, this is crazy. A double Makoa. Who, who's going to win? Khan Makoa or Inara Makoa? I think I like Khan Makoa a little bit more. I think I like Kamiko as well. So it's the Anara Willow on Radiant, to be honest. At this point, I'm going to hold my breath because we'll wait and see till these are over. It's 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 flip flop. What is quite this logo here. for OTP? I keep looking at it and I can't figure it out. So it looks like a bandit. No, is it a, a raccoon? Dude, it's like there's like a bane mask. I don't know. It's like yeah. a bane mask sort of thing. But then those look like ears or like rain. Deer, like, away from me. what are those called? Antlers? Antlers. I don't know. Looks like there's a little, and then he's got the, the I'm lost. I'm lost, too. I'm also lost. We'll have to, we'll have to ask Joe. <laughs> Zah! Does it sound like he's saying Zah? Like, some, give me some pizza? I don't know. Zah! Oh, like, Could be like a good ad lib in like a Waka song or yeah. something. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Some Migos. <laughs> Genos. Genos in. Yeah. There is no middle ground. Man, I actually feel really good about this lineup from OTP, to be completely honest. Oh, it's very strong with Jaguar Falls. I don't think uh, – and, you know, Radiant do that thing 
it's still the same conversation about Willow, right? They have Willow, so yeah. they can't get it. So then they can succeed with the Inara. It's about OTP getting them off the objective. I think they have absolutely the composition to beat Radiant in a fight. It's just about how quick can you do it. Well, let's uh, get in the game as soon as possible and see how Radiant will be able to either claim the 2-0 or if OTP will tie this set up 1-1 and send it to a game three. The Khan and the Makoa, dangerous frontline pairing. But of course, the Inara with the Willow supporting her in a map like Jaguar Falls, that caught that catwalk near the point is going to be a big area of contention. And to be honest, the Leon would have been nice to have some hit scan to just get her off of that. And they've got to go with the Cassie and hope that she hits her shots to displace the Willow early on. They do have a dredge anchor. That's going to be, I think, what they ride pretty much on to pull her off of that. And as much as we talk about that, we never see many Willows take up that positioning, I feel like. I don't know. For whatever reason. You're and exposed. it's not a spot you feel super safe in. Either. No, no, you're exposed. You're pretty close to the point. I think most front lines can stand on the point. They'll just stand as close to you as possible while still being on the point and still get good damage against you. They're still going to get probably 80, 90% of their fall off curve, if not all of it. Yeah, McCoy definitely will. And he looks, misses the hook right there. But look, Potent is actually on that catwalk right now. For whatever reason, He's you not even coming close to that one. Revolts finds it. Now there's definitely no way he's getting off that because Revolts has already created space with the kill. Going into hideout and some billow movement speed, but it's going to be a full wipe for Radiant Esports. This is a good time, I think, to talk about why front lines are so important and why we see them picked and banned early in the PPL and the PGS and the PCL. Put Revolt Kings on Bomb King. Put him on Leon. Put him on Victor. Put him on whatever you want. What does it matter when you've got Fanatics in front of him, making that space, making yep. it so easy, putting a giant shield of saying there is no pressure on you. Yeah. Everyone's running away from you. No one's even really returning fire. Right. It doesn't matter what they pick to put in the back line. As long as their front line is successful, they still have the Inara on the objective, capturing all the while. I don't know. Radiant Esports looking dominant right now. OTP not playing their front line the right way. Headed to the objective to square off against Fanar. It's not yep. what you want to do. Sneak around to the back line. Go through one of these side rooms. Hook this Willow off the high ground. Put some pressure on the people that you can actually kill. I completely agree with you. I think we're seeing a shift in the dynamic of Paladins. Away from damage, which it has been for maybe the last four months or so. Back onto the front lines. Definitely with Torvald being more relevant. But just with the increased value of Khan, with him being more of a stable pick. Remember earlier in the spring split, definitely in the the summer con was not really a factor and then just becoming a factor people initially thinking con wasn't even good and now finding some of the value that he has and ways to play around him it just hasn't worked here for Niju it is too much to overturn and I also got to say I think Smutney has been incredible for this team I mean his heels have been on point but the Grover on stone keep which is it's not super easy Especially given how spread Radiant have been playing. They've been doing the Fernando plus X over on, you know, some high ground, some flank, getting control of some part of the map. Yeah. While Inara and then another backliner, usually played by UK, is sort of just sitting far, far and away. So Smoney able to keep his boys healed up with a Grover, who is very positioning intensive. Yeah. I love the uh, I love the idea of competitive paladins, man. It's just such a great thing. Especially if you're a player watching and you're maybe new to the scene, just there's a different pacing, there's a different style. Everyone's just waiting, they're, they're taking positions. It's not this, what ends up being a lot of times a free-for-all, especially on a map like this where it's, you're so close to your enemies. And someone could be fighting, someone could be defending, but I love the patience that these teams place on themselves. Here's and, a fun uh, question. Yeah. If we didn't end up going to the draft mode and we stayed in, in mirror mode land, still had our bands, what do you think the comps would be nowadays? So we didn't go to draft mode, and we stayed into... Remember, like, the Andro duels, right? That's right. Like, way, I'm talking wow. way back in the day. Yeah. Way back in the day. You know, I think we'd see... I think we'd see... Uh, double Makoa, for sure. Yeah, double Makoa. I think we'd see double Makoa. I think we'd see... Double Furia? Pretty much Inara. Double, mm, I think yeah, we'd see double sure. Inara. I think if you, one team had an Inara and you didn't, it would be like, there'd be no way for you to really out-sustain them. I definitely what think about we'd see though. I, if both well, he's probably I think that would he's be still banned, a, yeah, think? yeah. I think we would see a uh I think we'd see quite a few of the double Drogos, double Willow kind of thing. I think blasters are, are all double bomb king, right? I think we'd see that where blasters are just 
always reigning supreme. But in that same vein, I think our switch-ups would be if people love running those blasters, we'd see the Andros in response, you know? I think there would be that variety. But, uh, gosh, just thinking about it, I'm super glad we have the draft to where we can guarantee it. It'd be a fun match of the day or something. It would be. Would be. Paladins could use match of the days. I just I want to play that Seeds of Ascension Peak mode with every right? character. That would be and great. Pick my damn character. That would be great. I, I agree. Know. I completely agree. Well, some characters would break it. I think that's probably Points why they did it that way. Seconds. Sure. Yeah. I because mean, you're not thinking about like all the That's one of my favorite things to like go back and do in Smite is play play my Omnipotence Conquest with 80% CDR and infinite mana. It is fun. I absolutely Four. love that mode. Three. It is fun. Two. And they do, you know, One. Smite does a good job banning out, like, the, the corny champions, I think, in those modes as well. So we would just have to sit down and figure out who they are. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely, I don't know, Torvald would be pretty corny <laughs> in this mode. I don't burr, know. Burr, burr. Just bubble, I got you, I got you, I got you. It's working, it's oh, working. Man. Save oh, me man. now. Yeah, that would be probably the, the worst. The worst thing ever. Westside, need you finding a couple of kills here. This was a very big deal. I think it was also the oh! Willow Ultimate. Look at that. <laughs> Badge Tiger finds himself a ferocious roar with a through time in space, and he cleans things up for OTP. Wow. That's Radiant now going down. What a random spot to hit it, too. My goodness. Way and out in the open. They could take the lead here. Definitely good. 84% Impressive. climbing. No comeback mechanic. OTP. Finally getting themselves on the board, getting some kills, holding the defense, grabbing an objective, getting their feet wet. Getting their feet wet, and uh, what seems to be an ever-increasing pool of potential. I'm very excited to see at least OTP have a response. It is demoralizing to get here, get too owed, not even give it yourselves a chance, not win an objective point, but they've done it. They're now in the lead. It's all about how far can they push. We'll tell a lot by this whether ultimates want to be used. Zen's got the spike, he could go for it. A lot of time to work with. Wow, Shoots look at this. Burning. Gets in, gets ah. his kill, but goes down. This is okay though, OTP need to kind of like actually take that L, take that death. And if I'm a Koen Genos, I may have jumped off the map as well, kill my streak, go back to base, spend my credits, actually cement my lead. I think the interesting thing too is that we're seeing the Genos start to have uh, a little bit more of that same impact. Here's the thing, in Paladins, there is always that moment where a champion is really good, has a great level in competitive, has a small nerf, and then the entire community is like, oh, they're trash, never play them again. Geno said that Luminary nerf, we stopped seeing him so much, but it's not to him, and he's never the reason why. We're never like, oh man, Luminary Genos, he's carrying the team by just s using a Star Splitter and killing everyone else. It's always because of the mark that was applied to players like Zen. So Zen showing that when he has that Luminary mark on him, hitting for that 977, it's just as dangerous as it was before. Yeah, I mean, look at the way that Fuel Study Torvalds always operated. He's yeah. It's never been about him, basically, is the conversation. It's never been. Probably never will be. I don't no. know, maybe, it, maybe part of it's Furia, and, and she brings that sort of on-demand damage amp with her ultimate. Perhaps that's something to do with it. I don't know. I, I personally just think that he's overlooked. You know, he would be a guy in maybe the buy, sell category that I might be like, I, I'd like to see that bought a little bit more. Especially with champions like Zen. I just think you've got so much to, to be work with. Zen, another one, because the Firing Line Khan, Plus just an astral mark. I mean, you're talking 35% damage amp for this man. Remaining. That last swing and Yomi's hitting for over a thousand, thousand fifty. Maybe that's seven, part of it as well. I mean, Zin six, hasn't really five, seen a lot of changes, four, but three, he was a character two, that before his sort of rise to fame in the spring, summer-ish, yeah, wasn't really widely picked, and people maybe just getting used to playing around him. Everyone has their sort of style, how long they run Billow, how fast they are in Billow, do yep. they have any CDR reset, that type of stuff. Yep. So maybe once everyone got used to everyone's Zin, he's then, a little bit less valuable, so Genos becomes a little bit less valuable. Furia comes in, she's a great replacement for Genos. I don't know. Well, now we see a 2-2 for OTP and Radiant. It was nice to see Radiant actually have a stall here and a win on the objective, but it was all capitalized on. Wow, man. Just like that. And a great switch to perspectives. See what it looked like for those who are going back to base as a result of it. Could have even been better. I mean, Fernando charged out of that. Luckily. Almost. 
almost felt like for no reason. It was very, very quick after the fact. A couple of master ridings actually coming out for Radiant Esports. They want to get to the objective quickly. West side will match them on his Makoa. So they got to just ask themselves what worked for us last round. I think not headed straight to the objective. West side, maybe use this master riding. Yeah. Yes, to match them. Or at least Fernando on the flanks here to try and you know create some space because I think that's where the success of this comp comes from. Zen should get first mark here and he doesn't. Very interested. Uh, I don't know. Can the generals get to him now? Is the question. He's got to back off. This is all the damage that you want to be really I think amped here. And finally it comes, but they've already done the job. There it is, 977. And so now they've gotten full control. They haven't gotten any kills, though, so that is something to be aware of. Everyone on the side of Radiant is still alive and waiting for their moment to get back on the objective. They've already used a couple of key ultimates there, the Inflame as well as the Faith Light, getting almost no value. If anything, it just feels uh -oh, like it was used dead. to retreat. Willow goes down. Fury is going to be rotating in right when this Makoa is as well, making an easy line of the support. I don't know if he meant to hit that Fernando, <laughs> but he did. Now he's going to have to deal with an Ancient Rage as well. He's going to pop it and just continue to buy time, buy space. And we're starting to see why you felt really good about this lineup. We're starting to see it more and more again. Another objective captured. And uh, I think we could clearly see what one of the main reasons why is. That 19 streak on the Genos. Everyone's been getting that Astral Mark, that Luminary, for a long, long time. Yeah. Another thing that Even the are really struggling to deal with is just having their Inara overpowered at the start of every fight. There's really... There's no way to deal with that. And I think one of the ways that we're seeing people deal with that is by accepting. Accepting it. Not being in denial. Not Absolutely. popping in flame faith light. Realizing that Arnar is going to die here, right? And this, uh, you know, we got to get this loss out of the way. Hold this out quickly, efficiently, and then get it back. That was a huge play as well by Smutney to find the kill. It was about to be over. This push might have collapsed there if Zen found that kill. And that's what he's doing, diving so well. Next time he's up, I'd like to take a look at his loadout because he's running hideout. He is running car for some movement speed in that loadout. But I wonder at what level. I think he's running it at five, honestly, on both. He is spending a long, long time in that. So when the Zen is back up, it'd be great. Take a look at that loadout. Let's do it. So it is four for both. Close. Up in smoke and hideout. Almost maxed out That's here. what you thought, right? I thought it was five, to be honest. It was oh. a very long time. And I think what we usually see is like a hideout four, maybe an up and smoke three. That's yeah. usually why it's a little longer. It's less than half a second. And then we always talk about the relationship of up and smoke and hideout. Yeah. You know, one versus the other. Yeah. Cover the distance. I don't know. I kind of like hideout, I think, better, right? Because right. at least you get that. If you're going to cover the same distance, you might as well have the potential to, like, stall out a point longer or something. Yeah, I hear it. No, I completely agree with you on that one. It's kind of risk reward. Oh. There's the value. Oh. Tried to hook from the catwalk. Saved by the bell. It's too much damage from the Willow. This is what we've seen. Radiant Esports have lost the last two objectives, but they've done fantastically in just holding defensively here, making sure that OTP doesn't really have any glimpses of success. And you got to wonder if they've now deciphered a plan on how to deal with that overpower in the beginning of the round, because that seems to be the Maybe only Maybe just issue. put a wall up. on, Just wall off that doorway. Or maybe then... it's just... Maybe it's just find a way to, to, to seismic remain. crash the con before you can do it. Or maybe maybe just be aware of it, have the seismic crash, and the second he throws you, seismic crash, stall yourself midair, hopefully before you... Yeah, the thing is they've kind of... that you used to be able to do that, they kind of changed overpower to... You, you can't take action for a decent amount, a decent chunk of time now to where, like, blinking or, you know, popping an ultimate, especially when you're dealing with this close to the edge being launched off, there's just no way an R makes it back. So I think throwing up that wall on that doorway and then moving, once the wall's down, just move out of line of sight. It's also resilience, right? I mean, if you do invest in resilience, you do have the opportunity to not slow the, not tank the duration down um, below a few seconds, I believe, but you can really diminish the distance that he throws you and the empty, basically the velocity at which he throws you. So you can maybe save yourself or at least buy enough time by the time you are able to take action. Wild Guard, you can see, has had a horrible round. Take a look at the items, though. <laughs> he just has to be that guy, though, that just gets thrown off the map every single time. It's part of playing Inara. So maybe it's just go get thrown off the map, reset, and then come back knowing that the overpower is not there. Yeah. It's not an easy call, but I think it's, you know, that's the way some of the teams in the PPL deal with it at the highest level. So 
that, throw up the wall, do something. I think right. just make an adjustment here. That's the big thing. I think they're trying to. And I think they're going to go maybe for... Ooh. Wow, Badge Tiger! Yeah. Are you kidding me? And he got the inflame here, but it doesn't even <laughs> matter. Niju is going to find himself another kill. Wow. Wildcard goes off the map. I mean, what can you say when Genos is hitting ultimates like that? There's no way around it, ladies and gentlemen. OTP I mean, made the decision for them, right? Right. You know, maybe one way or another. They had to make a decision, and it ended up being... Let's take that L quickly. Overpower is now down. Radiant Esports didn't pop anything else. Here comes the Fae Flight. Here comes the attempt to take it back. Now, the problem here is if the Zen makes it out alive. I think that's an issue, but this could be big. Oh, missed the fireball. And now Thanatix can't keep looking at him. He's going for the Immortal. Oh, the wow. Zen! Oh. He gets knocked off! Wait a second, is that just... He kicked himself off the What map. the? I can't believe that is a very deadly mistake. Oh. OTP are about to tie this up, but did they just let go of the reins a mile oh. away from home? Oh my god. You hate to see it. You hate to see it. The Zen kicks himself off the map. Smutney hits a massive solar blessing as well. I think three of his teammates were standing in that. Just like that, they still have Seismic Crash. They still have Enlightenment. 90% and climbing 96. Is anyone going to get there? Yes, just barely in time. It looks like Makoa play these ultimates well, and I think Radiant have this. I don't see them losing. It's not that it's impossible, but now that in flame, I mean, Radiant, how can you lose a fight like this? The Genos is alive. It's got to be the Cassie who goes big or goes home. It's the Khan who's the last man standing in LZ Legends. He finds a JT Lu. I don't know how to say his name, but he's just done it. OTP grabbed the victory. Oh, my gosh. They wow. were flirting with death. They were flirting. He killed everyone there. Oh, man. That's the, the, the biggest thing there is you could see the panic. You didn't. Fernando didn't know where to go. He saw Smutney getting pressured out by Zen. I think that's on Smutney. I think if you're Smutney, throw out the Solar Blessing and just dive in with your team, right? Zen, it, he's going to succeed against isolated targets, right? So just clump it up. Get under that beam that's giving you 6,000 HPS and Man. just hunker down, brother. Man, we saw a crazy amount kind of, of the redemption that one. I mean, Definitely. He off of him, Definitely. So he needed that. He needed the triple kill. That had to be like a horrible moment for him. But they bought themselves enough time. They got the overtime. Makoa put himself in the harm's way and was able to make something out of it with the with the help of his team. Let's take a look at the Genos uh, who started out that round with a through time and space and set up OTP for the success they had. And it does come down to this, Nick. I mean, winning first means you can lose mid-round and come back and oh, win at the end. Man, and he even got the inflame out. That's the thing, though. I don't know. There was, was that a smart inflame? That right? wasn't right, exactly. He kicks himself off the map. He did. almost rolls back on. That's where that shows us that the decision to just take the L early, get that overpower out early from Radiant Esports, wasn't the decision made by themselves. You, you, right. When you're popping an inflame to try and survive that, I don't know. I'll That's tell you a what, though. Tough call. Look at that overtime. Zen doesn't use his whirl already. He couldn't got, have caught back to that point. And the only person standing on that objective that was on the side of Radiant was, I believe, the Khan. Or no, who was it? It was the Fernando versus the Khan. It was the Fernando. Fernando misses that fireball at the very end. I wonder if he kills Khan. Overtime timer ticking away. If Zen can even touch. Because if we're just Cassie on, maybe the shield comes up. I don't know. This is a – man, that was a game of inches for sure. It's uh, going to be map number three that this first one goes to. Our first of eight. Should be one-to-one -one there on the series score. It's best of three. Radiant versus OTP. Right out of the gate, we got a good one for you, though. This one's heating up. Bright Mars is where it's going to come to an end. We'll see if anything else is banned out. In game number one, Bomb King went off, so he made his way into the bands, which means Khan made his way out. Still had a pretty, I have to say, resounding impact. Absolutely. Radiant OTP tied up here. It's going to be Koga banned out with the Torvald. It's hard to get that insta-gib, though, with Khan on Bright Marsh in particular. You have to kind of, like... Go over to the patio and try oh, and scoop yeah. somebody from under, and it's it can get a little little hairy. Yeah, it's a, it's an interesting route. I mean, you could definitely do it. There is an angle, but it's not necessarily where you want to usually start out as con. You want to head straight to the room. Bomb King taking first for Radiant OTP now with a response for two. I think he's Fernando Nara here. You get the Fernando. That combination's been working too damn well. For it has. Yes. And you get I'll the Nara as well, but they're gonna stick with that. At least the McCoy. I think Nara is. Probably still the play here for you. I think we're going to see another Genos here. And I don't know if it's going to be on the side of uh, OTP. I think Radiant might steal that up. It honestly was a big factor is the reason why OTP were able to win. I think the Zen was empowered. 
Uh, I just think you saw the Makoa on their side extremely empowered. He was hitting hard. I'm sure they felt that, but it's going to be Furion. For Radiant against Smutney feeling very, very confident. Although they don't have the Inara, they don't have the Makoa. I, you would assume it has to be a Fernando here. But still not the best champion to soak up the value, and it's it's a Willow. I was, you know, you want to talk about that relationship between Willow and Inara, but I don't know if they had the Cajones to double blaster. Not a lot of teams are running this at any level of play in no, any you're region. Right. You're so, right. Radiant, I think kudos to them. They draft uh, for the game here. Genos taken again. And this is relatively scary. I mean, the Cassie and the Makoa, mm -hmm. those are two very hard-hitting at-base champions. They're going to take the Zin. That's where that feels like that's a, they're taking they're that taking away, from... and I don't know that they needed it. Yeah. And here's the Fernando. So you're like the double blast of the Zin. They've got the triple DPS. I don't know. OTP doing it the old school way where they've got a triple DPS, but one of the DPS is pretty much a front line, so they can flex that any way that they need. And the Inara. The sustain, I think, is better on the side of OTP. How much can the Solar Blessing Furia keep this Fernando alive? Yeah, I don't know. And running it into the Vivian, it's not going to... And no Radiant haven't been doing this. They haven't been doing a traditional... You know, it's not even really traditional, right? They haven't been doing a point Fernando. They've been doing a sort of, you know, we're going to flank and spank Fernando. Fernando is absolutely not going to be able to stand up to Vivian in this instance. They have a lot of AoE to get around Vivian, and I think nullify her pretty exceptionally. Zin can just spite right through it. It gives them a good target where otherwise you really don't have one. Spite's, you know, a little bit of a lackluster ultimate at base. You've got Willow and Bob King that just blast right through the shield for Vivian. Yeah. So if those characters can deal with it, it's going to be a domino effect. If those characters deal with Vivian, then Fernando can start doing his job and everyone else. Their job becomes a little bit easier by consequence. Well, it's Bright Marsh to send it over to the end of the set. See who takes the victory in this best of three series in the Paladins console league. Should be a close one. It was a heck of a game, too. That's for sure on Jaguar Falls. Talents coming out, it's a guillotine for wildcard, so that's really how they're looking at playing it. And notably, using the cunning uh, title, and that is what Vivian's mastery title is. So maybe wildcard's saying that he knows exactly what this Vivian is up to, and he's very well equipped to mm. deal with it. She changed her, what is that, Sap Rounds? What is her, uh, oh no, that's Opportunity and Chaos, I believe. No, it is Sap Rounds, okay. So we got the guillotine here, no morale boost out of the gate. I don't know how I feel about that. It's well, definitely a conversation. Look at this. Look at this. I mean, it's going to be an easy 4v5 soon, but they have already aggressed onto this Makoa. And if he can hold his zone, I mean, look at how much time he has wasted from this Willow, who is not using her dead zone on the point, which is what you would have assumed would have been the reason. And she still almost loses that fight. Health. Wow. That's why Makoa is so strong. Exactly. Think about what happened there. Willow just, just beat on him for like almost a minute. And he still almost turns that around. I mean, they have to. They don't kill L LZ Legends there. No one has really been dealing with the Sonara, but you know what they do? They go the long way around. But here's Makoa with the hook. Still can't find the kill. I mean, it's really a game of inches. You can tell that Radiant Esports are playing a very dangerous lineup here. 81% for OTP. Did buy a lot of time for Anara to just get there and sit there. But look at the dismounts coming out now. She's oh, almost gets dead. poked off of the high ground. Spite is nowhere close to being ready. Forced into the billow here. Radiant Esports are flirting with death at the moment, but it's West Side who falls on the objective and make things much more difficult for OTP. JTY Lu finds a kill though, man. I mean, this is definitely looking like it is OTP's fight to lose. They've just got so much saying power. I mean, what do Radiant Stop think the they're gonna be doing? Escort I mean, what is this Fernando? You can't chase around the point. Forever, you gotta, you gotta wow. stay on the objective. And what happens Killing then? Spin. Beautiful shot by LZ Legends and the roll afterwards. But I don't know the long game. I'm not seeing this as a smart investment. Enemy killing spree. God, that crossbow's hot. <laughs> Tell you what, yo, take it easy, man. It's distracting. <laughs> it is beautiful. Cassie's let her dragons out onto the field, and she's kind of, you know, had a much greater impact in this game. Then I think we would have, we didn't really talk about it, right? I think there was a lot more going on in this draft, but yeah. Cassie, always that mainstay that could be such a solid avenue of success for you. Forcing the Immortal out with a great time and space there. The Spite will come through as well to put the foot down and say, we're gonna go ahead and stabilize here if you don't mind. Yeah, Jay Tai Lu just looking for an angle and he found it. Potent has got to be worried about just staying exposed against this Vivian. And LZ Legends, he was the one who was on the Zen last game 
Just had that triple kill at the end. Had the unfortunate fall beforehand. Wildcard taking the Zin away from him. This is the pick that you thought really made their drafts feel a little bit forced. Feel like they were trying to take something away that yeah. didn't necessarily work for what they were going for. And I'm seeing that play out here. You have to strike that balance for sure. I think it's evidenced a little bit by the guillotine, right? It, you know, in old day, in olden times, Zin, when you didn't have the Genos, would like to go for the guillotine in some situations. I don't know, but it's it's definitely the less common oh, one wow. picked up here. It's definitely a little bit harder to play around with. And there's always that, you know, you're doing less damage, so you're charging your ultimate slower anyway than when you would have Guillotine online. He's gotten the one kill, but outside of that one spite, what's the Zen really accomplished? No, I mean, I think the strength of OTP's lineup is they just have very clear roles. Anara stays on the objective. Everyone else roams, tries to do damage, gets healed by Zen, uh, by Genos, excuse me. I mean, it just feels very, very straightforward. And I think what Rain and Esports are dealing with is they just have a very, a higher skill ceiling for how they need to execute this lineup. There's really only one tank, but they've been using him as a flank for the entirety of this set. So how does he go to the point? How does he find damage? How does he find maximum usefulness? I mean, it's something that they don't know until the round starts, and it's very reactionary, I think. So the reason I think I would have rather seen the Zen go for morale boost is because with Cauterize 1, it's not enough anti-heal to make a difference in 95% of cases. Uh, while also losing the damage from Yomi and having a Luminary Genos on your side. Right. I think you, you you sort of look at this like a con overpower, right? Make sure you're always having that spite available. Use it to delete Anara at the start of every round and just see how OTP responds. Yep. Itemization-wise, too, Nick, do you think that they get some extra value from going blast shields here because we do see the double blast. 30 seconds yeah, running. and I mean, it mitigates Fernando as well. Yeah, and then it's Zin, Gatine Zin isn't doing spree. too much. You're not too worried about that damage, especially just on its own. Not investing into it now, really focusing on the Cauterize. And I don't mind that. I mean, they've got the Willow against them, trying to match up with that and just eliminate the Furia. As the threat. That's another thing, right? They have dead zone, right? Yeah. You're, they probably have brand as well on Fernando. They have some inbuilt anti heal. Wildcard Zen needs to delete people. He needs to get a lot of ultimates off. Three. You know, she's going to throw down the dead zone on Nara and you just delete her. You don't need any more anti heal at that point. Right. He wants, he's playing this more like Yomi, but right. he's picked key team. Badge Tiger is in an interesting position. He has not died at all this game, and he has been such a huge part. And there's a through time and space. Does not connect. Forces the Immortal. In fact, it does connect. And that is why the Immortal is used. Fernando saves his life there. Wildcard trying to find anybody to swing at. It's really Revolt Kings, though, who's on the 10th streak. The Bomb King has been the biggest issue for them. But Jay Tyloo, and now LZ Legends, hasn't been in sights, but right back at them. Oh, this Bomb King is in such a great spot, but just hasn't found a kill. And it's Niju who finds the first. Why are they dragging their feet on, on this spite? I don't understand. They had exactly what they needed to just delete this front line rather than let it grab 60% on the objective so early. They had Inflame as well, the movement speed him in there. Here comes a Spite on the back line, Smart. guarantees a double kill, has his Billow available. And it's gonna be the triple kill. The only problem is they don't have a combat mechanic here. If they do, I think this point's secured, but because they keep having the one-to-one, -one, it's giving OTP with how aggressive and dominant they are in the early round, enough time to get back on the point. Here comes Makoa. He's going to be able to wow. box that out yeah, for very long. Gone. It's a quick three tap for Makoa. West side already picks up Revolt Kings and close but no cigar here. We saw this exact thing happen last round. Oh, yeah. OTP is just going to work their way back onto this objective just in time. They're going to have the man advantage here. It's a good solar blessing to top everyone back off, but the front line is just a little bit thicker for well, OTP. LZ Legend's feeling very confident. Luckily, he didn't roll Overtime. off the ledge there. It was a very uh, wise roll, and now he's just losing the duel. And Wildcard is just absolutely out-dueling him, and these are the things that will change the tide. Oh, beautiful heal. No one has gotten to Smutney, and maybe it's a focus on Revolt Kings and Wildcard that's the issue, because Smutney seems to be keeping everyone alive. He has traded places with Badge Tiger. He has not gone down all around. And that is finally Rainy and Esports taking the lead. Let's look at the uh, the healing charts here, and maybe even the damage, just to get a feel for what Fury is accomplishing here. Third, 93,000 healing. So she's ahead of Genos there, the damage as well. She's off the bottom a little bit. She's above Inara. Yeah, and at the by. end of the day, she's already popped off two Inflames this round and is already back to 37% on her third Inflame of this round. Biggest moments in that round for me, Nick, were the Solar Blessing in the point they got uh, 
his wild card back to full. I think the double kill from wild card earlier on with the guillotine, finding the first one on the LZ Legends and the Cassie, and then the third one was wild card just trading out one v one Cassie and him on the steps, him on the bottom tier. Cassie misses the disengage and just loses the trade. I think that. Either one of those moments don't go that way for Radiant and uh, OTP yeah, win. Yeah, I mean, two triple kills, right? If you, if you ever needed something to bail you out of a rough situation, that's pretty much it. And that's the type of thing you just don't account for, right? That one looked all wrapped up for OTP, but you, know, you always have to put the asterisk of barring catastrophic failure of a double kill or triple kill. Yep. That type of stuff can go wrong for you at any moment. I mean, well, lineups and matchups don't really matter, as you'll know in casual play, I'm sure if you're watching. Uh, if somebody just kills all of your team, you know, if an Androxus gets to the back line and just kills four people, I mean, who cares about what matchup you got? It just, that will always usurp it. Don't you hate it when a teammate shoots a counter that hits you <laughs> and kills you? Don't you hate it. Don't you, don't you. Well, it, it happens. Don't yeah. bite the hand, don't feed the reversal, don't proc the counter, all that oh, good stuff. Oh, man, really? I don't know. I think you let it go in. I think you're okay. I think okay. it's just respect for Radiant, but OTP playing with comeback mechanic this lineup, I think they succeed heavy. Now they've lost the Ancient Rage for next round. That would have been, a, in my opinion, comeback mechanic, and you have all your ults. That's a guaranteed point fight one. That was some damage coming out of the King there. They popped the Immortal. It's like, why Immortal if you're not going to use other stuff as well, yeah. right? Yeah. You know, you could Immortal. King Bomb was rolling through on that Makoa. I still like. I still would like to see Zin be a little bit more liberal with his ultimates there. Just get an R off the objective there, and I think that's a, a very different fight. He's very focused on Makoa here, yeah. which is it's not a bad idea, right? Because he has the most HP of anyone on this lineup. The payload will roll through. They do spend the spite when it's all said and done for it. We'll have to see how they handle the next team fight without us. Oh ults. yeah, yeah, yeah! That was huge. We didn't see this triple kill from Poten. As highlighted as the kill. stuff from Wildcard, but incredible, incredible plays. Smutney is the one who hasn't died this time around. So I think if your support lives in this matchup, uh, you, you tend to kind of win the fight. Definitely. Smutney is, I think, seconds. a big, pretty sleeper reason why they're doing so well. Chronos 3 already. It's into the Chronos 3. Let's take a look at the loadout from Furia, because we, you know, we don't dive into her loadouts a whole a it's lot. It's the same. Four, Let me guess. Solar Flare, Light of Dawn. Two, uh... One. The other card that heals her, Kindle Fire, or whatever that is, and then the card that reduces the cooldown, and uh, what health card? This looks like a chair, like a, a cherish load up. Uh, no, it's Solar Flare because you've got the radius increase on the Fire Strike, or Solar Blessing, excuse me. But yeah, it is. I mean, she does the same thing: Burning Oath, Light Forge, Light of Dawn. Those are always going to be in it. Just flexing on the Solar Flare and the Stoke the Fire. I, uh, I, I honestly, I think it's it's Paladin. The only support that really changes loadouts, I think, is Damba, based on preference. And even him, not really, but it's really like mini guards. Do you run that, or do you run a little bit more possession? Everyone runs uh, Swift Spirits and Eerie Presence. But that looks like it'll do, Pig. I mean, Radiant Esports now in a great position to hold on. OTP still with ults. But not the ones they need, I don't think. I mean, unless we see a massive time and space come through, it's going to be really rough. And Immortal is here and should prevent that from happening when it's all said. Go makes it back to the objective. Very early Immortal. Nobody's really even in danger of dying there. I don't know why he panics so much. Yeah. And now people are starting to die. Point. Potent brings it back. Finds himself double kill over time. Couldn't make it work. Quietly into the good night then. Yeah. Rating Esports grab it, although they give OTP that one in the second round, but it is game three that goes their way. Two to one goes to score a percent for the Paladins console league. And uh, I, I'm very excited to see Smutty return to Paladins Esports. And it seems like he's made a very nice debut with this console team here. Yeah, long standing guy. He's been around for a very long time. Started on PC, moved to the console pretty much like right when it came out, but didn't find a, a lot of success. So now that the console league opens things back up, I think for a couple more teams per region, it's good to see him come back. Well, we're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back with more Palin's console league after this.